So my talk is called Extensions, Frameworks, and App Groups. Things just got complicated. For those who don't know me, my name is Adam Shaw. I am an iOS app developer. I have a company called Kabuki Vision on Twitter, at Kabuki Vision. Please follow me on Twitter. I hardly ever tweet. It'll be exactly like you didn't follow me at all. <laughs> so let's get started. In the beginning, there was the app. And your app project probably started off pretty simple like this, right? You have one target that's basically your app. And there's that test target, but no one ever tests, so we ignore that. <laughs> and things were like this for a good long time until iOS 8 came out and they offered app extensions. And now we have another target we have to deal with when we add our extension. And that's fine. That's not too bad. It makes things a little more complicated. But Apple tells us that if we have shared code between the app and the extension, that we should create some shared code framework, which has another test framework you can ignore. And I'm kidding. I'm not at all kidding. Um, <laughs> tests are great for other people. Um, and oh yeah, then the watch. Watch, it's another extension, it's another app. Suddenly things are getting a little more crazy. And of course, you can add as many extensions as you want. And uh, the point of this talk isn't really to go into super depth about app ex extensions. It's to talk about this kind of new complicated world that we have now that we have to deal with app extensions and sort of the, the repercussions for that and how can we, you know, what, what are the new things we suddenly have to worry about now that we have extensions in our apps. So just a quick overview, in iOS 8, they added app extensions. There's extensions on the Mac, too. I'm, I'm pretty much ignoring the Mac for the purposes of this talk. Sorry, Mac developers. Uh, a lot of it still applies. So you're probably familiar with all those. Just, question, just quick uh, show of hands, who's written a uh, iOS 8 app extension? Ah, OK. Roughly half. Cool, cool. Uh, so we're going to dive in a little deeper. Let's talk about what are extensions. I mean, we know, we know what extensions can do, right, from that previous list, but let's talk about what, what actually are app extensions. Well, they're little packages of executable code and resources. Uh, they're kind of like little mini apps. I don't mean apps in the sense of like having an app icon on the home screen, but, you know, it's this little, this little executable code that, that runs. And the purpose of an extension, of course, is to extend the functionality of other apps, right? I mean, if you want to extend the functionality of your own app, you're going to just add code to your own app. The whole point of this is, you know, if I want to build a share sheet extension, it's so that Safari can share stuff to my cloud service. It's, it's to extend functionality of, of other apps and system services. Uh, extensions run in their own little process, separate from, from uh, the other apps. And uh, they're built as separate targets in Xcode, as we just talked about. So here's another little overview of like a typical extension scenario. Say you want to build a share sheet extension to share URLs or images or whatever to your cloud service. So you know, start with like you know, this is the other app, right? The, the Apple calls it the host app. Say say Safari, and the user is in Safari, and they tap the little share sheet button. You know, what actually happens? Well, Safari is making some sort of call. We don't need to go into detail, but some sort of call to some system frameworks, right? Saying show the standard share sheet, and if the user taps your app as the one they want to share to. Uh, the system frameworks, you know, something in the operating system launches your extension. It's launched as a separate process, and it passes some information to your share extension and says, hey, go share this. And uh, you notice that, you know, the extension and the host app are in separate processes, and the only real sort of pseudo-indirect communication is through the system frameworks, which is using some sort of magic inter-process communication that we don't need to care about to transfer data. It doesn't really matter how that works, but that's sort of the basics. And keep in mind, of course, that your own app, like your real app, is a completely separate thing that runs in its own process, if it's running at all, right? Your app doesn't even need to be running in order for your share sheet extension to be, to be there. So that's sort of, you know, we, I, if you've written an extension before or, you know, watched any of the WWC videos, you probably already know this. 
But one of the questions sometimes that comes up is, you know, why run as an extension? Like, what, what, why, why, is, why is that previous screen like that? Like, why is everything running a different process? What's the, what's the point? Why, why can't I just add some code to my own app and have it just, like, implement my extension that way? Well, uh, you know, Apple's given us a few answers on this and a few hints uh, uh, about some other things, and we can kind of put the pieces together. You know, one reason is uh, performance. You know, these extensions, they're separate little pieces of code. They can, they can be quickly run. They can be quickly discarded by the operating system as needed. Simplicity. Uh, the life cycle of your extension is completely independent of the life cycle of your main app. And so, you know, it makes your life a little easier. You can kind of treat them as uh, separate in a certain sense. Safety, this is a big one, right? If I write a bad share sheet extension and it crashes, it'll crash my little share sheet, but it won't crash Safari, right? And if I'm writing code that cr that's, uh, causes Safari to crash, that's a really, really bad user experience. And uh, security, similarly, my, my extension is running in a separate process from Safari. I can't snoop on, on the host app. So those are kind of the, the reasons why the system works the way it does. All right, we're going to do a little demo code. And what I'm doing with this demo is basically taking an, a very, very simple app, and we're going to add an extension, and we're going to kind of see how that makes things a little more complicated, and we're going to talk about how to deal with that. So I have this, I have this app called uh, Color Mood. And what Color Mood is, where's my simulator? There we go. So I, I have a bunch of cool photos in my photo library, you know. I like, I like photos of nature. Uh, but sometimes I'm in the mood to only look at pictures that have a certain color in them, right? And sometimes I'm in a red mood, sometimes I'm, I'm in a green mood, et cetera, and so on. So I wrote this little app called Color Mood. And so if I just want to look at the red images, I can do that. And all it's really doing is it's kind of it's analyzing the pictures in your image library uh, to see what their main... Uh, color component is and filtering by that color. So this is cool. You know, I'm going to submit it to the App Store really, really soon. Make a lot of money. Uh, any of you, any of you, steal this idea? I will sue you. Um, sweet, sweet litigation. Yes. Um, <laughs> So this app's pretty simple, but, but before I actually submit it, I feel like it needs something else. I feel like it needs, I really want to be able to uh, show these photos uh, in the uh, uh, notification center in like the Today View widget. So I'm going to create a Today widget. Uh, by the way, I should point out, sorry guys, I'm still using Objective-C uh, because I'm an old man who is stuck in my ways. Ah, yes, you're my favorite new uh, attendee. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really pretty simple. I mean, uh, you know, here's my storyboard. There's just uh, two view controllers uh, here. I have this color manager here in this image library, which are like kind of helper classes. The color manager analyzes the colors. The image library is kind of applies the logic to filtering out the images. It's really, really straightforward. So I'm going to add a today extension. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how today extensions work. But let's go ahead and add that. So today extension, there we go. And I'm going to call this color mood today. Whoops, I'm going to spell everything right. And then again, I'm going to spell everything right. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now you can see, oh, hey, look, it added an extension to our target. That's awesome. And uh, the other thing it did is it added some boilerplate code, kind of a little skeleton for the Today extension. Luckily, I've already pre-written the code for my extension. So if I had only stayed in the right directory, I would be able to find it. No, not Dropbox, Desktop. There we are. Uh, I think it's this one, perhaps. Yes. All right. Here's some code. So all I'm doing here is I'm just copying code I've pre-written on top of Apple's boilerplate code. And then, uh, is this my code? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, OK, and it's just a real simple story where just a, si a single image showed in my 10 a view. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. All right, well, I got some errors, right? 
let's let's see what it's complaining about. All right, I'm having some linker error, color manager, and image library, which are referenced from today view controller. Uh, it's uh, not found. All right, well, that's we can kind of that's pretty obvious why that happened. Uh, th these these shared uh, uh, these classes, these utility classes, are used by the today view controller. If I look at like color manager here, I see that it's only uh, only built for the main app uh, target, right? And so, you know, what's the, simp the simplest way I could fix this, right, is pretty straightforward. I just go, oh, you know, because my today extension needs uh, those utility classes, I'm just going to go ahead and add that to this target. Right, right? This is pretty straightforward stuff, I think. And let's run it. Okay, well, that looks better. Let's see what comes up. If anything... Simulator. Okay, cool. Here's my here's my today uh, today view, and it works, and that's awesome. And I could ship this if I wanted to and make my millions, but uh, there's something that makes me feel a little uneasy about what I just did, and it has to do with the fact the way I solved that last error, right? Like. Look at this image library. I've 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 added to the both targets, and what does that mean? Well, it means when it builds the main app target, it's going to compile this class and put its compiled code in the main app. And then when it compiles the extension, it's going to compile this code again and put another copy of that in the extension. I'm going to have two copies of the code in my the app package that goes to the app store. And uh, that just seems inefficient. I mean, for this, right, it's only two small little classes. <laughs> Who cares? But I'm already planning version 2.0, and I'm going to have all sorts of other color filters, and that's going to be a, a ton of uh, utility classes, and I want to kind of do this the smart way. And what I really want here is a way that I could build the code that's shared one time and have both the extension, the app kind of link to it uh, in a way that, uh, you know, I'm not duplicating space. Fortunately, Apple has already has something exactly for that purpose. Frameworks. Um, obviously, uh, frameworks, uh, our developers being able to build their own dynamic frameworks has existed on the Mac for a long time. So Mac developers, this is not new to you. But uh, in iOS 8, Apple allows developers to create our own frameworks where we can put uh, shared code. So what are frameworks? Well, it's just a little package of compiled code, headers, resources, maybe a few other things. Why are headers there? Uh, one of the reasons is that one of the intentions of frameworks is actually to provide kind of a, an external API. And so you have, you know, kind of your public headers are in the framework so other people can, you know, build against your framework. Frameworks also um, are usually dynamically linked. When we, when we use frameworks in the generic way, we're talking about the, the, the kind that are dynamically linked at runtime, although technically you can create static frameworks that do get linked uh, statically at compile time. And uh, even on iOS, even iOS developers, we've already been using frameworks, right? I mean, UIKit, it's a framework. Uh, it's, it's one that we all use for every app we've built for the iPhone. Uh, and let's, let's look at that scenario a little bit of how we've been using UIKit. So say you have a few apps on your iPhone, and if they were all running at the same time, they'd all be in a separate process because of sandboxing and all that fun stuff, of course. And every app uses UIKit, right? But it's not like my app has its own copy of UIKit built in it, and your app has another copy of UIKit, and your app has another copy of UIKit. There's only one copy of UIKit, and it's on, it's on the user's device. And so when your app runs, it actually gets dynamically linked at runtime to UIKit, which is pretty cool. And not only that, but remember how we talked about every app was running its own process? Uh, there's still only one copy of the compiled UIKit code in memory. It's read-only code, and it just gets kind of mapped to uh, 
the memory map of the process. So it's very, very efficient, right? Not only are, you know, there's only one copy of UIKit on, on the storage, there's only one copy of it sort of running in memory at once, and yet all the apps can kind of use it. And that's, that's, that sounds like kind of what we want for our own app when we were talking about the extensions. So yeah, for, for our extension, it's a very similar thing. You know, there's our app, there's our app extension. And we can create a shared code framework, which has the same properties. And that's really cool. And that's, that's sort of the, the way that Apple is uh, you know, pushing us to, to start thinking about our apps. Obviously, in this sample app, like I said, if you only have a couple classes, maybe you cheat and just add it to multiple targets, because eh, who, you know, who cares? But, but you know, for, for moderate size apps, uh, you know, this is something you need to start thinking about. And it dynamically links. So we're going to add a framework to that sample app, the color mood. Uh, but first, I'm going to start by just w talking about the steps that I'm about to take. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new target in Xcode for my framework. Then I'm going to add the code that should be in the framework to the framework target. Then I'm going to uh, configure my framework headers, which I'll show you what that means. Then I'm going to import my framework to all the, uh, both the app and the extension that are using it. And then I'm going to do this thing with this flag, which I'll show you in a minute. Don't worry about it. Trust me. All right. So the first step that I had mentioned before is I'm just going to create a new framework target. New targets. And if I go here to Framework and Library, Cocoa Touch Framework is the one you want. And I'm going to call this Mood Kit, because we like the kits. And Xcode has now done two things. You can see it's added yet another target. So it's starting to add up, actually two targets. And it's created some boilerplate stuff for Mood Kit, which actually currently is just a single header and a single info plist. So uh, the next thing I need to do is I want to take the code that I want to be shared, which is the color manager class and the image library class, and I want to add that to MoodKit. And all I'm doing right now is I'm dragging it here. I'm not actually adding it to MoodKit. It's just you know how Xcode organizes it, but I want it where, where it belongs. And so in order to really add this code to MoodKit, I have to say, well, I don't want uh, colormanager.m to be linked directly to the app or the extension. I really want it to be built as part of the MoodKit target. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And uh, there's one more thing that might not be uh, obvious. Uh, uh, because we're still working in the land of the past with Objective-C and we have .h files, uh, actually, you know, normally we don't add .h files to targets, right? Normally it's just the, the .ms. But for your frameworks, that's no longer the case. For frameworks, you do need to add the headers to your framework target. And the reason is, is because it's kind of like part of the public API. And I say I use public in quotes. I don't mean literally like, you know, it's your own private app. But it's, it's public in the sense that it's being exposed to the other uh, targets in your, in your app. So I actually have to add the header here. And then there's this little uh, scope uh, attribute, which I have to make public. And I'm going to do that for image library too. All right, uh, one more thing I need to do with headers, and that is, uh, you know, when you, inc when you include the uh, UIKit framework, you, you just import UI kit, right? You don't import UI view or UI button or any of the individual ones. There's like a single header and it sort of gets you everything. And uh, we want to do the same thing. And your framework will always have this sort of, uh, I forget what they call it exactly, it's like kind of just a generic uh, header. Umbrella. Umbrella. Umbrellas? I think that's something. I mean, right, right. All right. Um, and this, when you import MoodKit, it's really importing this, this header. And so what I need to do here is I need to add an import of my other two headers in here. MoodKit 
which way did I spell color this time? Whoops, this one. And I'm doing this so that when people import smooth kits, they will get all the headers. Im please can I spell library.h. All right. All right, so that's good. Still a few more steps to go. Uh, the next step was I need to set up my app and my extension so they're now importing uh, MoodKit. Because I think I've done everything to get MoodKit to be built correctly. So it's just in my view controllers. You know, here I had kind of explicitly imported the headers previously, but now I'm going to import MoodKit. And I'm using the, the newer uh, at import mechanism, which you should use too. Um, and then in my today widget also. OK, so last second to last step. Uh, I've changed my code, but I need to make sure that my targets are set up to link to MoodKit. So if I look at my app target, well, I can see the Xcode already did that for me. It's already set up to link to MoodKit. I guess when I created that target, it just added it. But my extension, I need to explicitly say that it's going to use MoodKit. All right, let's see what happens now. Unfortunately, I wish there was some awesome way to, uh, to show that it's now using the framework, other than the fact that it's still working. There's nothing, you know, I, I, there's no end result. But, uh, you know, just trust me. You were all watching me, right? I wasn't cheating. Uh, so we're almost done. But I got one little warning in Xcode, and I hate warnings. Not really. In real life, I let them slide all the time. But for demos, we got to get rid of warnings. And that warning is, what is this? Linking against dialib, not safe for use in application extensions. All right, well, this is that little flag I was, I was telling you about that we need to deal with. What this basically is, is app extensions, there are certain APIs that they're not allowed to link against. And Xcode normally checks this for us and, and makes sure that our extensions are only using APIs that we're allowed to use. But because our extension is linking against our shared framework, it can't really guarantee it because it doesn't know if our shared framework is linking against APIs that we're not allowed to use. So it gives us this little warning saying, ah, I don't know about this. And we can make this go away by, in MoodKit, in our build settings, search for the word safe. And require only app extension safe API. We're going to set to yes. And this is basically just saying, you know, it's telling Xcode to make sure that our framework only includes APIs that are safe for extensions, which then causes Xcode to not uh, warn us that we might be doing that. If that makes sense. And uh, yeah, same result except no warnings. So, well, maybe the simulator will come up. I get that problem where the simulator sometimes doesn't come up on its own. All right, still running. All right. So before uh, I move on to the last topic, I'm going to talk a little more about frameworks. Not so much how to build them, but more just sort of some, some, some ideas and some tips and tricks on how to use them in your apps. So. Uh, any shared code, any code that's shared between an app and an extension is a good candidate for a framework. And typically, uh, typically it makes sense to group related code and resources together into their own frameworks. You, know? you can certainly do this, which is what we just did, right? We just took all of our shared code, put it into one big framework. Well, it's not that big, right? But one framework called, you know, whatever, my app kit, and that works fine. But if you have a, a complex app, you might consider 
breaking uh, your shared code into multiple frameworks, uh, maybe for models, networking, and app views. Especially true if, say, your extension uh, or you have two extensions and one only needs to share the model data and the other one just needs to share some of the, the, the views, you know. It's a, it's a way of kind of doing things more efficiently and also it's just kind of, you know, good app architecture. Doing it like this really forces you to think about creating uh, very separated, you know, uh, APIs uh, within your app uh, to, you know, uh, separate logic and, and just kind of better app architecture. All right, uh, third-party code. You probably all have third-party code in your app that we get from GitHub. We all do it. Uh, what happens when you want to use other people's code in your shared framework? Well, some third-party code is really, really simple. Like some things are actually just a single class, right? In which case, if you want, just go ahead and, like I might just put something in MoodKit directly and just expose its header, right? That's, that's fine, that's fine. But for complex stuff, maybe it should be its own framework, right? Uh, good example, like AF networking, it's, that's, a, that's not just a single class, that's a huge collection of classes, and logistically it is kind of its own framework, right? And so uh, maybe you want to build that as its own framework, and then you can just sort of use it in all your apps and uh, all your extensions have access to it. Uh, if you're using CocoaPods, by default, when CocoaPods builds uh, code, it builds it as a static library and uh, links it to your app. Uh, if you, however, use this use frameworks exclamation point keyword, it will then build your CocoaPods as a dynamic framework, and uh, it, and, it, and, it, and it will work as we want to do. We, we can share the, the CocoaPods between our apps and our extensions. Uh, I have not used uh, Carthage, but I am under the understanding that the fundamental way it works is to just build dynamic frameworks uh, all the time. Anyone, anyone confirm that? Yes. So if you're using Carthage, it just it's gonna it's gonna build frameworks already, and you don't need to worry about it. With a bit of prodding and poking. Uh, special. Th thing I want to talk about WatchKit because it's it's not really a special case but it's it's worth talking about. <coughs> so this is sort of how WatchKit works with uh, WatchOS one. Uh, you have uh, your app, you have a WatchKit extension, and this is where your your this is really your WatchKit app, right? This is where all your code is, and uh, you can have a shared framework that sh that shares code between your WatchKit extension, iPhone, and, and you know this is almost exactly like any other extension, right? But for Watch OS 2, they made a pretty significant change, and that is your Watch ex Kit extension now runs on the watch itself. And at first, I mean, there's a lot of really awesome things about that, but one thing you can immediately kind of notice is, well, well wait a minute, what, how does this, this, this it's not, it, you, you know, it obviously cannot dynamically link uh, to a, another framework across devices, so uh, what do you do? Well, Apple's created a, another target type called uh, shared framework, or the framework specifically for, for the watch, right? You might think, oh, that's cool, but Think about this. Think, I mean, it's no longer a shared framework in this particular scenario, right? Like, I, I've had to build two, two copies of it, one that's built for the watch's uh, architecture and one that's built for the, the iPhone's architecture, and it's, there's, there's two copies running. And in this case, the phone app isn't even sharing with anything. And so this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just something to think about. Like, it's some of the advantages you might have been forced to do for when you were building WatchKit 1 apps. Uh, you might not m make as much sense, uh, or you just have to kind of you know, rethink what does make sense. It's just kind of a, a, a special case to think about. All right. One more thing. Actually, it's one more problem. There was a bug in my color mood app. I don't. Did, did anyone? Anyone have an idea what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's it's well that that could be there too. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about like kind of an, a, a, a core a core bug with its core functionality. All right. Ah, uh, get out. <laughs> um. 
I probably just glossed over it, but the, 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 the bug is, you know, I've, I've chosen blue as my color, right? But my, my today extension is always filtering red, no matter what color I choose. It's always red. That's a nice picture of uh, what are radishes, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, 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 oh, that's really, really, really bad. So why is this the case? Well, uh, going back to this diagram, which I already showed you, you know, the app and the extension are running in a separate process, and they each have a separate sandbox, which means the fundamental place where they store data, you know, they can't, your extension can't read the app sandbox. In my app, I'm storing it in NS user defaults, which actually is still stored in your app's uh, sandbox directory. The extension has its own sandbox, right? So how do we solve this? Well, Apple has come up with a mechanism for us to solve this called app groups. An app group is a special identifier that you need to register in the developer portal, which allows your two, your extension, your app, to uh, both point to a shared container. iOS will create this special, when I say container, it's a directory, you know, uh, and your extension can access that, and your app can access that, and you can put any shared data in here, and that way both processes can access it. Now notice it's important to note that, you know, this didn't, this solves the problem sort of, right? But it, it, the extension still can't see your app sandbox. Your app still can't see your extension sandbox. So you have to really make sure, you know, you have to be explicit about, you know, if there's stuff I want to share, uh, I want to put it in there. And I'm going to talk about that next. App groups. It's kind of like a shared sandbox slash directory that both processes have access to. Um, hold on one second. Sweet, sweet water. Um, yes, and you need to, th I guess I'm running a long time, I gotta go a little faster. You need to, uh, when you're using app groups, you need to think about shared data coordination, right? I mean, you're having two processes that now are reading or writing to the same directory at the same time. There's a possibility of, you know, if you're not careful, data corruption, you have to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, if you're putting a core data persistent store in there, it already works, it's safe. Uh, same with a SQLite uh, database. Uh, same with NS user defaults. Um, if you're accessing files directly, that's kind of up to you. You have to figure out if it's safe or not. If maybe only one process is reading and the other process is writing, maybe that's safe by itself. Otherwise, maybe some sort of file coordination. And if you're using some other kind of persistent library or whatever, you need to find out whether or not it, uh, it handles that and how safe that is. All right, I'm going to add an app group to my app real quick, but the real steps I'm going to do is I've already created an app group in the developer portal. I'm going to turn on an app group in the target capabilities. I'm going to change the code to use the app groups. NS user defaults has this special method called knit with sweet name, and NS file manager has container blah, 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 identifier. Let's do it. All right, so I've already gone to my developer portal and created the app group ahead of time. Uh, which no one wants to watch me do, but what I'm basically do here is in my app uh, target, I go to my capabilities and app groups. I'm going to turn it on, and it's going to go, and of course it never picks the one that I want to use first. It's the rule, and these are all the app groups I've already uh, set up. I'm going to choose the one for color mood. I'm going to do the same thing for my extension. Oops, on, on, on. Yes, thank you for failing. All right, and uh, a couple more minutes. Am I okay? Just say yes. All right. Luckily, I've encapsulated uh, in Color Manager the only place I use standard user defaults. In which case, now I'm going to have to uh, alloc init with sweet name, and it's my app ID, which was group.com.kabukivision.color. Mood. I'll oh, thank you, Xcode, for failing. Yes, it's, you know. <laughs> all right, did I get all that right? No, there's one missing. No, I got it. All right. I'm going to copy that here. And I'm going to paste this here. 
I'm going to paste that here. And as I learned from last night going through the demo, I'm going to do a full, in fact, I'm going to, just to make sure, I'm deleting the app. Because for some reason, last night I was going through this, I was having all sorts of nightmares getting it to suddenly work, do a full clean, and now I'm going to do a build. And either this will be the most anticlimactic uh, talk of the, uh, of the day, or you're all going to be amazed. Oh, what did I do? Oh, well, maybe it's, oh, because it's, uh, it's a different uh, default. So now let's, uh, well, let's choose one that has some more. All right, so it should show the picture of that bus, because it always picks the first one. And just hold on, wait for it. Ah, there we go. All right, in summary, what a great way to end it. We learned about extensions, not really how to build them, but some of the, uh, the repercussions of adding app extensions, how to add uh, shared code frameworks to, uh, to share code between extensions and apps, and finally, how to use app groups to share data between uh, extensions and apps and all that kind of stuff. That is it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.